Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just be on our feet as we worship God? Hallelujah. Can we be on our feet as we lift our hands to heaven and just bless his holy name? Can we just say thank you, Father? Thank you, Father. We honor you. It's a privilege. It's an honor to worship you. It's an honor to gather before you. It's an honor to say thank you. Thank you for the breath in my lungs. Thank you for strength. Thank you for ability. Father, you are worthy. We give you praise. We exalt you. We glorify you, Father. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, Father. There is none like you. There is none like you. You have done what no man can do. You have done what no man can do. You have exceeded my expectations. You have done what I could not even imagine. Father, I just bless your name. I give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Light of the world, you stepped down into darkness. Open my eyes and let me see. Beauty that makes this heart adore you. Hope for a life spent with you. So light of the world. You step down into darkness. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes. And say, Here I am to worship. My responses, oh, 
commitments are fresh this morning in the name of Jesus that we will never be silent that we will worship you always oh God no matter the circumstance we make this commitment are fresh this morning Lord that we will not be silent oh God we will not be silent in the name of Jesus I will, I will 
Let me be silent. We will not be silent, oh God. That our lives will be in worship always unto you. It's with many labor, oh God, and acceptable in the name of Jesus. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name this morning. We enter into the Holy of Holies. We exalt you, Lord. There is none like you. You are Yahweh. You are God all by yourself. You said you are the I am that I am. And we have not come to any other God but you, the only true and wise God. We pass before your throne of grace this morning. We exalt you because there is none like you, oh God. Creator of the universe, what is it that you cannot do? Lord, we reverence you, oh God. We honor you. Abba Father, we honor you because you're the bestest father ever. We exalt you this day, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you would choose to tabernacle within us. We exalt you, oh Lord, my God. We worship you. We praise you, Lord. There is no like you. You're a good, good father. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We never take this for granted, Lord. May we never just stay walk into your presence. May we never get too familiar with you, oh God. We exalt you. We exalt you, oh God. We exalt you, O oh God, who is like you. Who is like you, who love us like you do. Who oh, is so gracious like you are, O oh God. We exalt you this day, Father God. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Faithful Father. An ever present help in time of trouble. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The God that never fails can never fail. You are eternal, immortal, invisible. What cannot even describe you? Your greatness, oh God, your awesomeness. Oh Lord, we exalt you this morning. We exalt you. We thank you. We know you are here. We know you are here. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. We bless your name. Lord, we do not take you for granted, Lord. And where we have taken you for granted, we say we are sorry, Lord. We say we are sorry, Lord. Whereas we rather be than to be in your presence. To worship you. So to come with a heart that seeks only after you, O oh God. Lord, we exalt you. Thank you, sweet presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, sweet presence of the Holy Spirit. Walk a walk in this service this morning like never before oh your grace that is sufficient for us oh god we tap into that grace this morning you are the owner of the grace you are the giver of the grace lord we ask for your grace fresh grace this morning in the name of jesus 
for we know without your grace there's absolutely nothing. We can't even receive the gift of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. For it's only by grace that we can enter. It's only by your grace that we can stand. It's not by human endeavor, but by the blood of the Lamb. We exalt you, Father. Oh, we exalt you, Father God. We exalt you, Father God. Let's never take the presence of God for granted. You know, no matter how much you prepare, the Holy Spirit always has his own agenda. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. If we gather and his presence is not here, it is futile. It is pointless and it's just a show. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Never come into his presence and not be able to be broken in his presence. Let's never get over familiar with the Lord. He's the creator of the universe. He's the God of all flesh. The immortal God. The immortal God. We should reverence him. If we will respect man, how much more the creator of that man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, family. Good morning, HTL family. Those joining us online, we welcome you. This is Church Unusual. This is Church Unusual. We welcome you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Wow, it's a full house. It's a beautiful day to be gathered in the Lord's presence. Hallelujah. It's like each time I come here, I know there's an agenda, but I, I, 
after I, I'm not, I try to remember what I was asked to come and talk about. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is Pastor Isis' fault because whenever he comes here, he just goes off on his own dimension as well. Um, do we have any first timers in our midst? I know we'll take this later on, but do we have any first timers already? joining us this morning. Can you show with a wave of hands? Anyone? Hallelujah. We have a gentleman. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. We're sure more people will join us as the service goes on. Hallelujah. We have Pastor Femi this morning. Pastor Femi Edu is in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the his subject, oh, the subject of his sermon is the virus alert. I, I'm thinking, wow. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. But you know, if we, if we look at what's been happening in the house, different people have been bringing different word, but there's been a convergence. And I'm sure this is not going to be any different. Let's always come with a heart of expectation. A heart of expectation. And I know that, you know, um, it will speak as an oracle of our Lord Jesus this morning. Even as I as indicted good matter, the word of God will bring transformation, will bring impartation, and will have an experience in his presence this morning in the name of jesus i know we're going to take the video announcements now um i think after that i would um th there's an announcement for workers meeting i will take that afterwards thank you trinity symphony hallelujah Good morning, church, and happy Sunday. Here's what's happening this week at HDL. It is another edition of Here is Life at Matthew's Club this week. Let us come together to share our If It Had Been Me responses to real life scenarios. After getting a chance to reason with one another, hopefully, we are closer to accepting the What Will Jesus Do solution to the puzzle. We have centers in Ikoyi, Victoria Island, Lekki, and the mainland, which meet online at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. There's also a youth wing in Ikoyi that meets online on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Please reach out to one of the leaders if you need any assistance regarding which center to join. Second Corinthians 3, verse 5 of the Biblian Literal Bible says, not that we are sufficient from ourselves to reckon anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Join us at Hope and Anchor, our corporate prayer meeting on Thursdays at 6 p.m. as we lift up our voices to God. For He alone is our source for all that qualifies us for the life He has called us to. As usual, our children can fellowship with us online on Sunday. For kids aged 9 and below, there's a YouTube video that premieres at 10 a.m. Our pre-teens have a Zoom meeting at 9.30 a.m. While the underground church for our teens meets at 9.30 a.m. on Instagram Live. The handle for this is at TUG Movement. Everyone has moments of coming against situations that are beyond our usual capacity. Holy Trinity Lagos is here for those times. Please. Call us if we can attempt to help you navigate your trying situations. For two weeks beginning on the 17th of May 2021, we will have our quarterly morning prayers. We daily raise up a corporate prayer altar to the King of Glory in whom we move and live and have our beings. Please begin to prepare your mind towards it. We will provide you with more information in the coming weeks. Please know that you can get up-to-date information about the activities of the church by following us on our social media platforms and by logging onto our website. 
On Instagram, our Monday motivation posts drop nuggets that uplift or inspire. Our music playlists come with bonus tracks not usually listed, and recaps of past church events can allow you to revisit encounters that may have had a special significance to you. On YouTube, you can watch full versions of past church services and events. You can also access the music videos. Good morning again. So I'll be reading from Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to 8. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Now Saul was consenting to his death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. That ends the reading. So join me in welcoming Trinity Symphony as they minister to us with a special number, Bondage. There's no hurt that can outlive the grace you freely give. It's the raging flood that covers us for the thoughts that come to decay. You sent love to strip them away, and you left your truth that will free in you there is no bondage every chain is broken there is no bondage Jesus our hearts are open There is no bondage, every chain is broken, oh, every chain is broken, somebody say, there's no hurt, there's no heart that cannot leave. Grace you freely gave the grace you freely give us the raging floor covers us, the covers us for the thoughts that come to for the thoughts that come to decay you send love you send love to strip them away and you left your truth that will free in you free in you There is no bondage. Every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. There is no bondage. There is no bondage. Jesus, our hearts are open. Jesus, our hearts are open. No guilt. No guilt. And no shame. No shame. All my sins are erased. All my sins are erased. There 
there's no
Hallelujah. Jesus, our hearts are open. We are here for you, O oh Lord. Come in your power, O oh Lord. Come in your might. Come like a mighty rushing wind this morning. Come like a still small voice. Come with cloven tongues of fire. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence here this morning, O oh God. Sweet Spirit of God. Come with your power. Bring light, bring life. God bless Trinity Symphony. Trinity Symphony are going viral themselves. You know, very soon after I came to church, committed my life to Christ, and started going through discipleship and workers' training and all of that. Pastor Tony sent me to work with the choir and the music department in Freedom Hall in those days, and I knew nothing about, I mean, when I was supposed to be learning music as a child, I was using my manuscript books to make paper planes. And I couldn't hold two notes together. But thankfully, you know, I, I found out that the Bible says that we can make a joyful noise. So those of us who are in the croaking department are covered. But, but because I knew nothing about the, mu about the music department and the work that the people were doing, I had to just go to God and ask for help. So God started speaking to me about worship, about music and... I couldn't sing, but I, I started to share with them stuff that I heard the Holy Spirit saying. And 
One of the things that the Lord said to us in that place was that a time will come when a sound will go from Nigeria and it will go to the ends of the earth. And that we would develop a, a sound that was Nigerian and it would go to the ends of the earth. So, so we've started to see that, right? But what is it? It's mostly Burner Boy and Wizkid, and Tiwa Savage, and David Doe. And you're wondering how I know all that stuff, right? I, I have young adult children, so. But I also love music, so I sort of follow the thing. And I'm waiting for the fulfillment of that word, so I'm following it. But then what happened during lockdown? Something went viral from here. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make a miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. But that's God breathing on something that someone has made space for God to work with, right? And then when the time comes, what happens? Boom. We've been singing that thing for years in church in Nigeria now, isn't it? Nothing happened. But when the set time came, there's a very interesting book called The Tipping Point. I don't know if anyone's read that book. This wonderful writer called Malcolm Gladwell, and he talked about how things go viral how suddenly everybody starts wearing doc martin shoes or how suddenly pepsi overtakes coca-cola and all sorts of things like that just how things go viral but you know the real story of viral trends is the story of the new testament church You know, in the course of the pandemic, especially in the last sort of earlier this year, when I was going, going through the illness as well, God started speaking to me and saying that, you know, this whole COVID thing is really like a parable. It's like a parable of the church. So in a sense, the story of COVID-19 is a parable of the church how this invisible pathogen has changed the world. We're all wearing masks. We're sitting far apart. We're washing our hands. Some new words have come into, well, not new words, but some words have become staples. Social distancing, lockdown, nose masks, hand washing, sanitizer. Some people will name their children quarantine and quarantina. Remote working, Zoom, YouTube, virtual meetings. Something that the eye cannot see brought the world to a standstill. Damaged economies destroyed businesses that are hundreds of years old, destroyed livelihoods, infected over 3 million people, if we're to believe the numbers that they're counting. Sorry, infected over 150 million people. Has killed more than 3 million. And 
And yet, what's happening there is uncleanness passing from one to the other. It's like in the Old Testament. Where uncleanness is what was contagious. If anyone had a skin infection or a disease, whether it was eczema or it was whatever it was, it was all called leprosy. In the King James rendering of the English. But anytime anyone had any visible problem with their skin, they immediately became unclean. Whatever they wore was unclean. Where they sat, it was unclean. Where they slept, it was unclean. Anything they touched became unclean. Anyone they came into contact with became unclean. You touch a dead body, you become unclean. Even husbands and wives. By doing what the Bible says is right and honorable and undefiled. They become unclean. That's mind blowing. The Muslims still do it. The husband and wife do the business in what our president called the other room. They become unclean. How? But that's what it was. A simple thing like a woman having a period, she becomes unclean. You bleed, you become unclean. You have a boil and there's pus, unclean. An illness that makes you dribble saliva, you become unclean. Uncleanness was contagious. And if you go to Leviticus, if you look from about 11 to 15, you see all sorts of instructions there for dealing with that uncleanness that was so contagious. It was almost as if it was not holiness that was the default setting. Uncleanness was the default setting. And uncleanness was what we transmitted from one to the other. Unless, of course, there was the washing of water, there was the sacrifice of animals and all of that stuff. And that's why it's so remarkable what Jesus did with that woman that had the issue of blood. All the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke record it. In Matthew 9, Mark 5, Luke 8, that story is there about this woman that had been bleeding non-stop for 12 years, had spent everything she had trying to solve the problem and she couldn't. So what that meant was that that woman was constantly unclean. She was a pariah. She was an outcast. Anyone that came into contact with her became unclean. And then this woman came to Jesus. She wasn't supposed to touch anyone. She was supposed to keep herself separate. But she came and she touched Jesus. And Jesus transmitted what he was carrying to her. Jesus, who was carrying the DNA of God, showed us the new way. That in the blood... What we carry is a contagion of cleanness. What we carry is a contagion of holiness. What we carry is a contagion of righteousness. What we carry is a, contagious, a contagion of life. And immediately that thing stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? Finally, she faced up and he said, go. Your faith has made you whole. You're not the one that's making me, Jesus, unclean today. I am the one who's making you clean. He saw a man with leprosy. Now a leper was supposed to go around shouting, unclean, 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 ringing a bell. He was supposed to shave. In those days, it was a mark of honor for a man to have my lockdown look. The beards were sort of normal. A man who didn't have a beard was sort of strange. 
considered maybe effeminate but a leper was supposed to shave his beard shave his head and go around shouting unclean unclean he was supposed to live outside the city unclean unclean and then jesus saw this leper and what did he do he touched him he could have said your faith has made you whole but jesus touched him jesus was transmitting healing and life and wholeness to the leper and letting us understand that what we carry is contagious And he said, go, do what the law says, show yourself to the priest, and do everything that's written. But I, through faith in my name, I have made you clean today. And he told us in John 15, when he started giving us the parable of the vine, that you are clean, you're already clean through the words please put up john 15 for me from one to sort of like five six seven eight something you're clean because of the washing of water by the word in ephesians 5 where he was talking about the church and he said he cleaned the church by the washing of water by the word he said to his disciples he said in john 15 you're clean you're already clean because of the word that I have spoken. Because that word carries the power to make you clean. The power to make you whole. And he was talking about abiding. But he was making a point. That because we are in Christ. Because we are that new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. We have become clean. And as it were, we're carrying the DNA of God. We're carrying a code. We're carrying a virus code. But it's not a code that brings sickness and disease. It's a code that gives life. It's a code that gives health. It's a code that gives healing. It's a code that brings wholeness. The Holy Spirit spoke about it again through Isaiah in Isaiah 61. And please put that up for me as well. I've come to preach good tidings to the poor. I've come to heal the brokenhearted. So instead of brokenheartedness, instead of brokenness, I've come to bring healing and wholeness. Instead of captivity, I've come to bring liberty. Instead of bondage, I've come to bring release. The opening of the prison, the breaking of the bonds, breaking of the chains, the breaking of the shackles. Please go on. Go on. He said, I've come to comfort those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty instead of ashes. Because ashes and sackcloth were the signs, the tokens of mourning. People who were in mourning, people who were in, 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 in affliction put ashes on their heads and wore sackcloth. And he said, instead of ashes, I bring beauty. Instead of mourning, I'm bringing the oil of joy. Instead of the spirit of heaviness, I bring a garment of praise. And instead of all of that brokenness and suffering, I've come to establish you as trees planted by the river of water. 
I've come to make you trees of righteousness. That tree that is spoken about in Psalm 1. The one whose leaf does not fail. The one that bears its fruit in season. The one who prospers in everything that he does. And I've come to do all of that so that all around you, you can rebuild. So that all around you, you can restore. So that all around you, you can bring wholeness. The power to heal and transform and deliver and save is infectious, is contagious. And that's what we carry. Everywhere we go, we carry the fragrance of Christ. It's not like perfume that we put on. It's not like a fragrance that we spray on or we dab on. It's not like an oil that we just put on and after a while it fades. Everywhere we go, at all times, we carry the fragrance of Christ. Why? Because we abide in the vine. Because we stay in the place where there is a transfer of life from Christ to us. We are fruitful and we are able to replicate ourselves in others. We are able to transmit what we carry. Because we stay in the place where we get the power for multiplication. Where we get the power to infect. In Genesis he said be fruitful. He said multiply. He said replenish. He said subdue. He said have dominion. And all of that got messed up by the fall. But in Christ, that restoration comes again. He says, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you, then you are fruitful. But without me, you can do nothing. Without abiding in me, all that stuff that is on the inside of you doesn't produce results. So a Christian that is not manifesting Christ and is not transforming their environment, that is not contagious, a Christian that is not viral, is not abiding. If we're not viral, we're not abiding. If we're not viral, we're not staying in the place where life and fruitfulness are transmitted and transferred to us. If our fragrance is not strong and permanent, it's because we have not stayed in the vine where the perfume and the oil come from. Why were the apostles different? Why was the story of Acts different? He said, you'll receive the Holy Spirit very soon. You will receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you'll be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And what did they do next? There were fishermen, tax collector, genocidal, radicals. Has anyone seen The Chosen, by the way? Who's been watching The Chosen? check YouTube, FaceTube, find The Chosen. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing presentation of Christ and the gospel. In it, it, please, find The Chosen. It, it, you will begin to see the gospel through fresh eyes. It brings the whole thing to life. Anyway, all of those guys could have gone back to all the things they were doing before, but no. They went to the upper room, and the Bible says that they stayed there how with one accord they were focused on that one thing we're waiting for power to come from on high and then it came and what happened three thousand in another place five thousand from acts sort of two three four it says that they were added and they were added they were added and then when the story of 
the deacons and the problems in the distribution of jollof rice came. The Bible says that something had happened and addition had become multiplication. What had happened? They had reached a tipping point. They had reached that point where the church had gone viral. And what did those guys say? We're not going to be distracted by bread and butter and jam and honey and rice and beans and dodo. We're going to focus on prayer. We're going to focus on teaching the word. We're going to focus on staying in the vine. Let's find men who themselves are rooted in the vine who can help us with this work so that it can multiply. So they didn't get distracted by what was going on around them. They didn't get distracted by their business, by their contracts, by their contacts, by their meetings, by their presentations. They still stayed focused in spite of the business and the busyness of life. And the Bible says that the word multiplied even more. And then what happened? Stephen was one of those deacons. He went and preached a powerful sermon. Turned everywhere upside down. And in the scripture that we read in the beginning, Saul was consenting to his death. So on account of that, persecution came. But God was in the midst of that persecution because all the people, the disciples who were in Jerusalem were scattered into Judea and Samaria. And what did they do? Because they themselves were in the vine. Because they were plugged into the source of life supply. They went everywhere preaching the word. They were viral. And what happened? Jerusalem became Judea. Judea and Samaria became very quickly the ends of the earth. And they took the gospel into all the corners of the known world at the time. How did it happen? And why isn't it happening today? There's a price that we must pay. And to pay that price, we need to count the cost. But guess what? In the wisdom of God, eh, he makes it easy. So Jesus was saying, yes, anybody that goes to battle must count the cost. Anybody who is put his hands on the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. But in the midst of all of that, he is at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So he says, just abide in me. Stay in the place where you can receive my life. Stay in the place where you can receive my spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon the apostles on the day of Pentecost. But after they healed that man who was lame from birth, and all the trouble started and the council and the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees and all of those people came against them. What did they do? They went back and reported the matter and they began to pray. You are the one that spoke by your son Jesus. You are the one that said this. You are the one that said that. You are the one that ordained that we would take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Look at these people. Consider what they are saying. You said by the mouth of David, why do the heathen rage? Why do the people imagine again a vain thing? The rulers of the earth and all of them together, they've taken counsel against Jesus, against us. And they've said they want to break our bands. They want to cast us asunder. They want to make a nonsense of the finished work of the cross. Will you not judge it? Will you not look upon it? And as it was recorded there that the Lord who sits in the heavens looks at them with derision. He looks at them with, what are these insects? What are these mere grasshoppers? Am I not God? 
is the heaven not my throne is the earth not my god is the heaven not my throne is the earth not my footstool am i not the one who is the governor among the nations am i not the one who sits upon the circle of the earth am i not the one that declares a thing and it is established am i not the one who has said that my word is forever settled in heaven and that my counsel will stand so yes i look upon it and i grant you the boldness that you have requested i give you the strength that you have asked for i give you a renewal a refueling what did they do they went back to the vine they went back to the source of supply they went and recharged their batteries they went back to the source of that viral dna and they got a reload they got a fresh injection of life and the bible says that they were filled afresh with the holy spirit these are people who had been filled to overflowing with the holy spirit but they were recharged by that same spirit and what happened boldness 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 and every time there was contention again paul would say pray for me Pray for me that I would have boldness to speak. Pray for me that I would have boldness to declare and proclaim the things that have been committed into my hands. And boldness will come and he would declare. And what would happen? The virus would erupt again. My brother, my sister, we're supposed to be viral. Everywhere we go, there should be a virus alert. everywhere we go we are supposed to carry the kingdom we are supposed to carry the life of God and infect everything and everyone around us with it we are supposed to bring beauty for ashes we are supposed to bring the oil of joy for mourning we are supposed to bring the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness we are supposed to proclaim the opening of the prison doors to all those who are captive We're supposed to heal the sick. We're supposed to comfort the brokenhearted. And cause them to be comforted. We go through affliction as training. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and the God of all comforts. Who comforts us in all our tribulation so that we may comfort others with the same comfort with which we ourselves have been comforted. So when we go through those things, we are told to count it all joy. That's why. Because when we go and bring comfort, there is an eruption of joy where we have delivered comfort. When we go and preach salvation, there is an eruption of joy. The Bible says that when Philip went to Samaria, what happened? There was joy in that city. There was an outbreak of joy. The joy of the Lord is supposed to follow us. It's not an irresponsible, drunken, mindless joy. It's a joy that comes because circumstances change around us. Because things happen around us. Because broken lives are healed around us. Time is up today. But it's time to go back to the vine. And God isn't interested in visitations. David said, in, I think in Psalm 136, he said, Arise, O Lord, with the ark of your strength and make this place your habitation. Make it your dwelling place forever. We don't want a visitation. We don't just want to come to church and feel good. We want to carry you with us. Permanently. We want to be the dwelling place of the most high. We want to dwell in the secret place of the most high. We want to abide under the shadow of the almighty. We want to carry the DNA of God with us everywhere we go.
Oh, Father, that you would open the heavens. Open the floodgates of your blessing, oh God. And pour out your anointing afresh upon us in the name of Jesus. And keep us rooted and grounded in the place of divine supply. So that everywhere we go, we will be carriers of your presence and your power. So that that revival will come. So that the earth may be filled with the knowledge of your glory. As the waters cover the sea. So that everywhere we go, the mystery of godliness will overcome the mystery of iniquity. So that everyone we come across at the door of their hearts, where sin is knocking and where Jesus Christ is knocking, they will answer Jesus. So that all the broken things and broken lives and waste places around us will be rebuilt. So that the mountain of the house of the Lord will be exalted above every other mountain. So that people will flow into it from everywhere. That people will hold on to us and say, take me into the house of your God. I have seen that God is with you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you are doing in every heart and every life that is saying yes to you this morning. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. word fresh word a call to action we can't even say that um, we don't know what the Lord is saying for the season we've heard enough and it's a call to action there's a reason why the book of Acts is called the Acts of the Apostles it was a book of action thank you Pastor Femi for that word Thank you for that word. It's a call to action. The Bible talks about in Acts 4.13 that great grace was upon them. And we pray for that great grace. Grace is an enabler that will step out into the execution mode in the name of Jesus. You know, in John 15, the caveat there is, if you will abide in me, if so the lord will not force anybody but that invitation is open so if there's anyone who is not abiding you know that scripture is so interesting because it speaks to different categories of people those who are not abiding some who are abiding already it talks about um, more fruits and much fruits and then those who are not even abiding at all so if there's anybody here today if you're not even abiding, that's where the journey for you begins. Um, we have counselors somewhere, you know, um, please, or maybe at the ending of the service, or just come walk to anybody to say, how do I even abide, you know, with God? What are you guys talking about? I don't understand it. It's a call to action. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew. God is doing an awesome thing here. Um, hallelujah it's time to give amen it's time to give it's also part of abiding 
we talked about grace, the grace to give is also available. Um, I'd like that we put up a scripture quickly. It's in um, 2 Corinthians 12, from, um, uh, sorry, 2 Corinthians 9. Yeah, um, from verse 6, 6 and 7. If you can give me in, um, in Amplified, I think. Thank you. It says, now, no, let me read. Um, Remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly would also sparingly, uh, um, reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to someone would also reap generously and with blessings. Let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion, for God loves. He takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver, whose heart is in his giving. Amen. Um, some other scripture says, you know, <laughs> don't be stingy with your giving. Give today whatever it is that we're giving. Okay. Whatever it is that we're giving, the Lord has, you know, um, is the one that has given to us. If you've never given before, this is an opportunity to start. Amen. And if you've given before, this is an opportunity to do much more than you have ever done before. Um, we have um, details to give online, tithes, offerings. We also have the POS machines at the back. Or um, if you want to do the transfers, those are the transfer inf information on there. Amen. Amen. We are the chosen generation called for to show excess and less. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. We are the chosen generation. We are the chosen generation. Called for, called for to show His excellence. All I require for life, all I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. We are the chosen generation. We are the chosen generation. Called for to show his excellence. All I require for life. All I require for life. God has given me. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who hey. I know who God says I am. Where it says I am, where it says I'm at, I know who I am. I'm walking in power, I'm walking in miracles, I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. Walking in power, walking in power, walking in miracles, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power, walking in power, walking in miracles, walking in miracles. I live a life of favor, I know who I am. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Bless our giving in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'd like to welcome our first timers again. If you're here worshiping with us for the first time, please show by a raise of hands. <laughs> hallelujah. We have more people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. We hope to see more of you. Please fill out the first time our details um, through the slip that will be handed into your hands. Hallelujah. And for those joining us online, there's an online form. Please feel free. Put your details and we'll reach out to you. God bless you. Amen. Um, I think one last um, announcement before I take my bow this morning. There's a workers breakfast meeting on the 1st of May, it's a Saturday at 9 a.m. All heads of department, assistants, and workers are expected to attend. Um, if you're not a worker, you know, Pastor Femi talked about the vineyard. We're all co-laborers. 
this is an opportunity also for you to come join. You know, there's so much to be done. You know, um, winning souls is an expensive business. Discipleship is an expensive business. So please come and join us. Let's do this work of kingdom together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, SPA is going on St. Paul's Academy. It's a discipleship class. That's also an avenue for you to gain more on what we're talking about and also to grow in the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, man. Good morning. I'm sure we're all blessed today. Yes, we're a prophetic and an apostolic church. We're a praying church, but we're also a fun church. We're a fun church, and we're trying to build and foster community amongst ourselves. Beyond Sundays and the Matthews Club, we feel it's important that we try to get to know each other better. And the first step towards that is we're having a men's event, a hangout on the 3rd of May. Um, can we show the flyer? Um, we'll be hanging out at um, Lekki Leisure. We're going to have lots of fun. Um, football darts, bossa ball, quad bikes, beach soccer, burgers and shawarma. And we're going to, it's an opportunity for us to get to know each other better. So please... We would like to encourage all the men in the house to register at the usher's desk after the service. I'll be there. It's, it's cost 22,000 naira per head for all the um, activities we're going to have. And we also like to encourage for those who are led to also um, support one or two of our other brothers who cannot afford this. So we'd like to encourage you as you're led by the Spirit to contribute for one or two of our other brothers. We would like to have as much men as possible there. So we look forward to seeing you all on the 3rd of May. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, we're, 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 we're getting to the other very exciting part of our service today. Very exciting. So I want us to rejoice now. It's time to celebrate with those who had their birthdays this month or their wedding anniversaries. So if you have your, if your birthday was in April or your wedding anniversary, I'm in April, mine was 4th of April, and I know Tochuku, so just, just come out, just, just come to the front, please, if you had your birthday this month, and then your wedding anniversary, please come forward, come forward, come forward, come forward, to you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. To you. Amen. Amen. You know, I woke up this morning and uh, one word that kept coming to me was the word victory. We have victory in Christ Jesus. Every day you, you see is another victory in Christ Jesus. Every anniversary you are able to celebrate is another victory. And we, we see this in First uh, Corinthians chapter 15, verse uh, 57. Okay, so in, with this understanding, I'd like to call Pastor Remy Adeguiga to come and pray for us. Because I, I, I am celebrating my birthday. I'm also celebrating my anniversary. They are both in April. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for a moment like this. We thank you for the grace that is upon our lives. We commit into your hand those who are celebrating their birthdays today. Whatever part of the month that it may have been, 
because they have come before you today to thank you. Father, we trust that you will make their latter years better than the former in Jesus Christ's name. We trust in you that you uphold them in their journey with you, that they will abide truly in you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare upon these ones that they will bear much fruit, even for you, to the glory of your name. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. We thank you, eternal King of glory, for those who are rejoicing for one anniversary or the other. We pray upon their lives that joy will continually be in their souls in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in their houses, in their families, in anything upon which they have come for you today. Father, you see their heart, that they are happy, and they praise your name. Father, their praise will come unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord and our God, in whatever way they are still looking up unto you, Father, you answer them speedily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That joy will continue to be their portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Thank you, eternal King of glory, because we know that you answer us even much more than we can ever ask in Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand as we close the service? Uh, media, please, can you put uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 on the screen? Verse 58, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Is it there? Okay. So uh, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is like a charge to us this morning as we start a new week. Let us be firm. Let us stand firm. Always abounding in, in God's love. Amen. Amen. Let me also remind us to uh, men to register for the program that Dickwood talked about. Um, it's an opportunity for us to come together. Amen. Amen. So Father, we thank you this morning for such a wonderful time in your presence. We we'll fellowship with you and with one another. We have been enriched. We have been revitalized. We have been equipped for the week ahead. The message came strongly and we have received it. So Father, I ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that this new week will be an exciting week for us. It will be a different week for us, a week that we would live to remember in the name of Jesus. And that the name of our Father will be glorified in all that we do. Father, we say thank you, Lord. And I decree and declare that lions will fall unto us in pleasant places. And that our paths will draw fatness and gladness. We will not stumble this week. We will not fall. Rather, we will stand for the gospel in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. And then surely your goodness and your mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. So let's rejoice as we go home. Thank you, Lord. Oh, no one the borrow has turned things around. Oh, no one but borrow has turned things around. Oh, no one but borrow has turned things around for my good. Oh, for my good. Oh, no one but borrow. Oh, Lord, 
Bok Bok Boro has turned things around for my good. No, 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 for my good. Good. 